welcome to News Click. Earlier this week, India became the sixth country in the world to launch a space mission to Mars. Despite the extraordinarily low cost of this mission, which is pegged at about 75 million USD, the project has been criticized by many who question the benefits such a project could bring to India. To discuss the issue, we have with us Dr. D. Raghunandan of the Delhi Science Forum. Hi, Raghu. Hi. So, Raghu, why has India launched this mission? What is this mission supposed to accomplish? Well, the proclaimed intention of ISRO was to develop technologies which will enable uh, interplanetary uh, space exploration and to conduct a set of experiments around Mars. Uh, you would recall that a couple of years ago we had sent a craft to the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, so India has clearly embarked on a journey of conducting some research in outer space. Mm -hmm first in the moon and now uh, in Mars. So that was the stated intention uh, of ISRO. Uh, but this particular mission, given its configuration, has a slightly more limited set of objectives, which are basically to demonstrate the technology to be able to reach Mars mm -hmm. and to conduct a small set of experiments, uh, which will yield a little bit in terms of the science. Do you think it's a binary choice India faces between funding space programs and social welfare programs? A lot of the criticism, especially in the Western media, has focused on the fact that India should not be pursuing such uh, programs when there are so many people without access to healthcare, sanitation and so on. What are your thoughts? Unfortunately, it's not just the Western media which has said that. We've had several commentators within India and normally progressive commentators with social concerns who have also taken similar positions. My feeling is this is a completely mistaken uh, position. As far as the Western commentators are concerned, we have been hearing this since the dawn of independence mm -hmm. in India. Uh, when Britain, the United States, the other European countries, essentially neo-colonial powers, said, why does India want to construct steel plants? Why does India want to make cement? Why does India want to set up scientific establishments? India is a poor country, it should think about feeding its poor. So we've heard all these arguments before. I'm a bit more surprised at the Indian commentators saying this for two reasons. One is the outlay of $75 million on this program uh, is actually very small both uh, in comparison with what other countries are spending. The US, for example, next week is going to send a very similar spacecraft to Mars at about six times the cost that India is uh, spending on this. Uh, and if you look at it from within an Indian uh, context, uh, this is about 450 crores uh, worth, whereas India spends more than one lakh crores every year on poverty alleviation, rural development programs. So this is clearly not even a drop in the ocean in comparison with what we do spend mm -hmm. on poverty removal and rural development. If we want to understand why India has not been able to achieve the alleviation of poverty and addressing issues like health and sanitation, we should really be looking elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We should be looking at political economy, we should be looking at implementation, uh, of our programs and not on whether we are spending some up small amount of money on science. So what are your main criticisms of this program? Um, because as you say, it is the cheapest mission that, that, that has ever been sent to Mars. And the fact that sending a mission to Mars is technically very, very difficult. And India is one of the first few countries to have done it. Yes. Well, we haven't done it yet. Uh, in the sense that we have to wait till about September of next year to find out whether the mission is successful in the sense our spacecraft starts orbiting Mars. Mars yeah. There have been about 50 uh, attempts at sending spacecraft to Mars, out of which only 21 mm -hmm. have actually succeeded. A uh, couple of years ago when the Chinese tried it, they sent a spacecraft on a Russian launcher. Unfortunately, it couldn't get out of Earth's uh, gravity. When the Japanese tried it a few years uh, ago, the spacecraft crashed mm -hmm. into Mars. So even when you get as close to the planet as that, 
we don't know whether finally we are going to succeed or not. So, and we should wait till next September to proclaim success. Mm -hmm. But uh, this particular mission, in my opinion, is a suboptimal uh, mission. The stated objective, as I said in the beginning, is to demonstrate the technology. Mm -hmm. There is no great technology we are demonstrating in this particular launch. If we had actually sent this on the geostationary launch vehicle, the GSLV, which is a more powerful rocket, uh, then I think we would have demonstrated something substantial technologically in terms of the launch vehicle than we are going to do with the polar satellite launch vehicle, which is what we've used now. The PSLV is India's workhorse used by India to launch low earth orbit satellites, which are normally used for weather sensing, for remote sensing applications uh, and so on. Whereas the high earth orbit satellites, which are what we require for communications, for television, for telephony, we are yet not able to send our own satellites on board our own rockets. We have to depend on the Europeans or somebody else to launch those satellites. Plus, we are missing out on a very important and growing commercial market in the world where given our low cost launch capability, we would have been able to uh, gain a lot of uh, market but share. This launch demonstrate exactly That's that? precisely what it does not do. Okay. If we had used the GSLV, mm -hmm. then we would have proved that we have a reliable heavy launch vehicle which can put satellites into high earth mm -hmm. orbit. With this, we have only demonstrated the 25th time that we have a rocket which can put satellites into low earth orbit. And that has limited uh, commercial uh, applicability. So from the technology point of view, we have not demonstrated much. And because we have sent a very light rocket to launch it, we have not been able to carry a heavy payload, meaning the scientific instruments. So we've just got 12 kgs of instruments. So they are very light instruments which can carry out rather simple uh, experiments. So the science yield is also not going to be as good as it could have been. In, to put it briefly, India, when it succeeds, would have demonstrated we can reach Mars. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it. So you actually don't see this particular instance as, as lending any great Philippe to the Indian commercial satellite launch? Not industry, at all. Yes, Not at all. So do you think that this launch will act as a spur to, an, uh, to a space race between India and China, as various people are commenting? I honestly don't believe so, although I think that uh, last year when the Prime Minister made the announcement from the Red Fort about this uh, mission to Mars, the political leadership as well as ISRO knew we didn't have the GSLV mm -hmm. ready. So they knew this was going to be a limited yield mission. So the fact that we would be able to reach Mars from a 2013 launch and if we miss this opportunity we'll have to wait till 2016. The next window of opportunity would be 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the factors that India must have taken into account is, let's at least do something which can showcase India's space abilities and scientific uh, and technological capabilities. Mm -hmm. And maybe one of the factors also would have been, let's do it before China does it mm -hmm. uh, again. So that may have been a factor, but I think this is more about bragging rights mm -hmm. uh, than about a real space race because frankly speaking China is way ahead of India right now in terms of launch capabilities uh, and I don't think we should even be comparing ourselves with Japan in terms of scientific and technological capabilities. Okay, that's all we have time for today on NewsClick. Thank you Raghu for joining us thank and you. thank you for watching.